And in natural fact, arcing faults are now one of the leading causes of fires on boats. Hello and welcome to another one of our Ask the Expert series here at Boat How To. I'm Jan Attenstedt. And I'm Nigel Calder. And uh, today we want to talk about uh, arcing faults. So um, we got somebody who sent us in a picture from a shore power cord which was pretty badly burned. So Nigel, what are arcing faults and what's the problem with them? And of course, how can we prevent them? Well, an arcing fault is uh, when you've got a loose connection. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to have an overcurrent situation. Mm -hmm. And if we have too many amps going through a conductor, yeah. we're going to trip a breaker or blow mm -hmm. a fuse. So in an arcing fault, we don't have an overcurrent situation. There's no short circuit. There's no fault in a, in a device. Uh, but what we have is a loose connection. Mm -hmm. And when we have a loose connection, we get sparks. Mm -hmm. And then the sparks burn things and make it a little bit worse. We get a bigger spark. And sooner or later, we get a fire. And in natural fact, arcing faults are uh, now one of the leading causes of fires on boats. Well, uh, and the way we uh, mm -hmm. prevent arcing faults is we bolt connections. Mm -hmm. And in our houses, you know, the, the um, cable coming from the utility comes mm -hmm. to the house, is bolted to the panel board, and all of the uh, circuit breakers, everything, they're all screwed or bolted. Yeah. Yeah. But everything is bolted until we get to the wall outlets, mm -hmm. yeah. at which point we have a, yeah. you know, a plug, a pin and sleeve connection. Yeah. But we cannot bolt the shore power cord. Yeah. Uh, so we have to have that plug at both ends of the shore power cord. So the number one place that we get arcing faults mm -hmm. is in shore power cords. Yeah. Because you also get pretty a lot of amps going through, yeah, there, right? Particularly in the states with mm -hmm. the lower voltage, you know, 30 we've amps, got 30 amps yeah. is, is the is the standard mm -hmm. circuit, and some of them are 50. Mm -hmm. In Europe, it's like six and sixteen so yeah, lower less. amps. Um, and then, if you go around any uh, big marina in the states and you take a look at the outlets on the dock, you'll mm -hmm. see signs of burning. And so, everybody should actually check their shore power cord on a regular basis both ends of the cord and also their shore power in it mm -hmm. on their boat. Yeah. And if there are any signs of burning whatsoever, or just little scorch marks, yeah. uh, they need to replace the, both the plug and the fitting on mm -hmm. the boat, yeah. uh, because it's potentially they're going to lose the boat over it. Yeah. Well, better pay a few bucks for a, for a new cord than, uh, than to burn yeah. down your boat. Huh? And yeah. a new inlet. And the other thing is to make sure that when you plug in, that you've got a locking plug where mm -hmm. you've got something you screw up or clip yeah. Um, because if the boat's in the marina and rocking and rolling a little bit and that plug works loose, you'll get an arcing fault. Yeah. And I have pictures of, uh, of burned up boats uh, from just that because the, the uh, plug wasn't tightened up. And then the insurance companies will deny the claim on the basis of negligence Whoa. because you okay. didn't um, mm -hmm. tighten the ring or, yeah. or put the clip on yeah. to secure the, the plug into the, into the socket. Yep. Well, there's a lot that can go wrong with your shore power connection. If you actually want to learn more about AC systems on boats in general, check out the modules in our advanced marine electrics course at boathowto.com, where we talk a lot about that. Thanks, Nigel, and see you soon.